JetBrains IDs run code inspections and identify errors in our source files. And in order to navigate through those errors, I'm going to define the following keyboard shortcuts. So to go to the next error, I'm going to use space E and sequence of keys. And to go in the opposite direction to the previous error, I'm going to use space E P shortcut. Let's not forget to source configuration file before trying this out. And now I'm going to switch over to the source file and make a couple of syntax errors in this file. And now let's try to navigate through these errors. So to go to the next error, I have to press space E N. And to go to the previous error, I will press space E P, which stands for error previous. Another useful feature of JetBrains IDs is to quickly navigate to the last edited location. So I'm going to define new keyboard shortcut to do that. I will use space LC in this case, which means last change. Command identifier is called jump to last change. So now let's just do some changes in this file. And then I'm going to go to some other place. And in order to go back to the place that we have just modified, we can press the space LC and right away our cursor jumps into that exact location. But we can not only jump to the last edited location, but also jump over recent location where our cursor was. So to open up the list of previous locations, I'm going to use keyboard shortcut space LL, which is going to open up the window with recent locations. So now I'm going to do a couple of changes in this file. And right after that, if we'll press space LL, we're gonna get such list, which we can use to go to a location where our cursor was previously. So that was navigation by using cursor locations. We can also open up the list with recently visited files. In my case, I'll have to press Command E to open up such list. But I'm going to define another shortcut to open up the same list. So let's just add another mapping in here, which will be Ctrl semicolon, which is going to open the window with recent files. So now after sourcing the file, if I'll try to press Ctrl semicolon, as we can see, we get the list of recently opened files. And we can navigate through this list by using whether key combinations Ctrl N or Ctrl P, or by simply using arrows up and down. Or we can even start typing right away in order to filter down this list and then press Enter to open up a particular file. By the way, we can also navigate through the history of places where our cursor was previously. So I'm going to define additional shortcuts to do this navigation to go to the next cursor position. I'm going to use Shift K shortcut. And to go to the previous cursor position, I'll use Shift L. And I try to use such keys for these shortcuts so that my fingers on the right hand will always stay in the standard position for typing because in my case, keys K and L are used to move up and down in the file. And actually, I have just noticed that I already use shortcut Shift K to duplicate the current line. So in case you use the same shortcuts, come up with another shortcut for moving forward action. Let's source configuration file once again. And then instead of opening up list of recent locations, by pressing space LL, we can also use keyboard shortcuts, which is Shift K and Shift L. So right after I'm gonna do a couple of changes and then try to press the following keyboard shortcuts, we can see that our cursor moves back and forth in between those edited locations while pressing those keyboard shortcuts.
Sometimes it might also be useful to navigate in between methods in the class. So I'm gonna add a couple of shortcuts to do exactly that. So to go to the next method, I'm going to use option opening square bracket shortcut. And to go down, I will use option closing square bracket. So now if we'll try to press these shortcuts, we will see that while pressing option closing square bracket, we are navigated to the next method. And while pressing option opening square bracket, we are navigated to the previous method. And by the way, in case you didn't know if our cursor is positioned somewhere inside the block, to quickly go to the opening block brace, we can press opening square bracket, opening curly brace. And to go to the closing block brace, we can press closing square bracket, closing brace. Another way to navigate around the code base will be to navigate between tabs. So I'm going to use space and N to navigate to the next open tab and space PP to navigate to the previous tab. Even though I currently have my tabs hidden, I still can press space and N to go to the next tab and space PP to go to the previous tab. But in fact, I already have keyboard shortcuts to navigate between tabs defined in IDE settings. And those are command K and command L. So I'm going to remove these two shortcuts from here. And that's about it. Let's continue defining keyboard shortcuts in the next lesson.